Hello and welcome to the show. I am Kachi Ophia, your host for the next hour of Scene Stealers and Show Stoppers because you know it, that's exactly what we specialize on on Rise 360. <laughs> Now, I am super excited because we have a great show in store for you today, and I kid you not, we are full to bursting with showbiz news. So here's what's coming up today on Arise 360. First, I'll be telling you all about what's been going on with a 360-degree tour on Arise 360 as I take you through the top stories from around the world. And then we'll be it has been making waves in the lives of the biggest music stars. Also on the show, it will be art, dance, theater, fashion, and more with today's review of arts and culture. And finally, I'll catch up with the Rise correspondent, Judith De Silva in London, to find out the latest developments in film and television. All of that and so much more, right here on Rise 360. If you're ready, we definitely are. Let's get things started by taking a look at some of the top stories that have made international headlines, and that means a look at what has happened in a day around the world. Now, starting off in America, who can ever forget those chants? Jerry, Jerry. Well, once upon a time, the Jerry Springer Show was the perfect location for a one on one showdown on TV. Then all of a sudden, it was over. The drama, however, is about to kick off again as Jerry Springer is returning to daytime TV as Judge Jerry. He has finally bagged his own daytime show again where he'll hear testimonies and render verdicts before a studio audience. NBC Universal Television Distribution announced the half-hour court program and will debut in national syndication in the fall of 2019. Jerry Springer began his career as a lawyer in Cincinnati, so he feels this is exactly where he should be. And staying in America, Hollywood star and activist Rose McGowan says that the majority of people in Hollywood knew about the cases of sexual assault within the industry, but kept quiet. Now, she is shaking tables that has celebrities all over the world on it. McGon was speaking at the Swedish talk show Skalven, and her comments again may just begin another series of sanctioning in the Me Too and Time's Up movements. Take a look. It's such a surprise. Yes. Have you believed them? No. No, why, of course not. That? Because I lived there. I know these people. I was there. I was there. I, I lived with it every day. And I know who knew. And I know it was the majority. And it was just considered like, oh, she's an actress. She wore a short skirt. She deserved it. That's the prevailing wisdom in a lot of industries, but very particularly that one. To which I thought, no, I wore pants that day, and nobody deserves it. You. Yeah, she definitely broke that table. Well, on to Latin America now, where Jenna Jackson and Daddy Yankee have released a Latin version of their song, Made For Now. Now, this features Jackson singing in Spanish and more verses from the reggaeton king, Daddy Yankee. Now, the club version of Made For Now gave Jackson her 20th career leader on Billboard's Dance Club Songs chart and Yankee his first topper. The song was remixed by Eric Krupa, Dirty Work, Benny Benassi, and Canova. Made for Now showed Jenna Jackson in a completely different persona. It has been performed live on Jackson's State of the World Tour, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, and the 2018 MTV European Music Awards. <clears throat> Well, excuse me about that. In Asia, Jackie Chan's 19-year-old daughter, Etta Chok Lam, confirmed on Monday morning that she had married her 31-year-old Canadian internet celebrity girlfriend. Now, Etta posted a photo on her Instagram account of the happy couple, both wearing white dresses and holding a marriage certificate dated the 8th of November, 2018. 
Now, many internet users expressed their blessing on Instagram as, well, as well as Weibo, China's Twitter-like service. Etta and Autumn started dating in 2017 and moved to Canada in October that year. But their relationship failed to win support from their parents. In April, Etta accused her parents of being homophobic because they were literally on the verge of being homeless. Now, over to Australia. The joy of every actor or actress is to share their craft with their loved ones, but not in all cases. Nicole Kidman said her youngest daughters are forbidden from seeing a film in which she plays a self-destructive, tortured soul of a policewoman. Now, it's a raw, complicated, and hopefully compelling film, the 51-year-old actress said of The Destroyer, in which she gives a gripping performance as an undercover drug detective whose life is shattered after an operation goes awry. Her character, Erin Bell, destroys those who go after her, and she's destroying herself as well. So she does not want the girls watching that, at least not until they're 21. Well, to Europe now, allow me to introduce the latest bachelor in town. Well, he's not every woman's picture of perfection, but John Harry can definitely hold his own. The robot is the creation of Russian programmer Alexander Olsipovic, who developed a working model of the Terminator T-800 from the hugely popular movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, the robot's name is John Harry, as I said, and he communicates on any topic, including philosophy and poetry. He even makes jokes, blurts, and gets irritated if you don't answer his questions. Now, why does this sound familiar? Well, most recently, John Harry learns to determine the sex and age of human beings, and he is just doing this by looking into their eyes with his camera eyes, and he's clearly done this very well because he won over the heart of his creator's girlfriend, Osana Arabic. Well, let's go over to the UK. The Cairo Film Festival is still on, and London was very well represented. British actor and director Ralph Fiennes is in Egypt, and he showed his movie, The White Crow. Now, he directed The White Crow, which showed at the festival on Monday, after having made its premiere in London last month. The film is a thriller drama, which follows the life of Russian star ballet dancer Rodolf Noriev, who defected from the Soviet Union to the West in 1961. Now, Ralph also acts in the film, and he said that the film addresses the personal cost of leaving one's homeland where freedoms are limited. Well, in India, superstar Harmil Khan may be shooting himself in the foot a little too early, or not. Now, on Monday, he acknowledged the failure of his latest film, Thogs of Hindustan, saying he feels very bad that he could not entertain the audience this time. Well, the actor also offered an apology to fans who went to watch his film with so much expectations. Thogs of Hindustan failed to create any magic at the box office, while expectations were sky high from the film, which was in the works for almost two years. But viewers and critics did not take kindly to it since the first day of its release. Hindustan. East India Company came to the but now it's the government. And finally, to Africa. This is not a very happy story. Techno is reported to have temporarily damaged his vocal box and has therefore taken time off music to rest. Now, the Triple MG boss, Ubi Franklin, confirmed that the singer had damaged his vocal box temporarily due to strain from overtime performances and would not sing or perform for a while. Techno has been having tough times lately due to the ailment, but he would still release music, according to his management, that has been recorded previously. Techno, to be honest, is a showstopper. In 2018, he released three non-album singles, including Jogodo, Your Love, and Choco. He also won the Best New Act at the MTV Africa Music Awards in 2016 and was nominated for the Best International Act, Africa, at the BET Awards in 2017. So from Arise360, we wish you all the best, Techno.
While still in Africa, Nigerian singer Timmy Dakolo, who we love, is out with his new single, I Never Know Say. While the song is dedicated to his very beautiful wife, Busola Dakolo, the couple is almost the John Legend and Chris Teigen of Africa. The song is produced by his frequent collaborator, Kobams Asukwo. It is a high life tune and a love rendition. And this one, just like others, is set to become another addition to wedding playlists all around the country. Well, it is time for a short break now after a very, very fun trip from around the world. But do stay tuned to the show, because when we return, I'll be bringing you all of today's music news, as well as all of those showbiz stories that have been trending on social media. Don't go away. Welcome back to Arise 360. I'm your host, Kachi Afia. Now, let's get you up today with all those headline-grabbing stories in today's music news. Now, British Albanian singer Rita Ora has opened up about how much she struggled to release her new album, Phoenix, and the doubts that came along with that. Now, Phoenix was officially released last Friday, but now we know that it was a record that almost never happened. Speaking to her fans at a gig in London's Notting Hill, Rita confects that, you know, she went through a low in her career when she thought she would never be able to come up with a follow-up to her 2012 debut album, Aura. She even considered quitting music altogether. That would have been so sad. Luckily for her fans, the pop star pushed through her doubts, and she admitted that completing Phoenix was, in her words, a dream come true. And now, American pop star Miley Cyrus has returned to social media with a new and rather cryptic video that suggests there is some new music on the way. While Miley previously wiped her Instagram clean until yesterday, when she appeared to announce a new song with super producer Mark Ronson, Miley posted a video of a disco ball shaped like a broken heart and captioned it with Thursday's date, the 29th of November. Now, this was backed up by a post by Mark Ronson on his own social media, confirming that his next single will be called Nothing Breaks Like a Heart. Well, I guess that settles it. Thursday is now officially marked on the Arise 360 calendar, so please, Miley and Mark, give us something good. <laughs> And Spice Girl Mel B has made a very interesting and surprising revelation. She did this in a new TV interview she gave to the British breakfast show, Good Morning Britain. Now, here's the deal. Mel revealed in her new memoir that, you know, she actually titled this memoir Brutally Honest, and she said in this book she addresses her 2006 romance with movie star Eddie Murphy for the very first time. She described him as her great love and spoke of the intense attraction that they had when they first met. Now, to be honest, this was a shock after stories at the time described their bitter split and then Eddie Murphy's denial that their daughter and Angel, who is now 11, was his. Well, those times have passed and Mel described Eddie as a real family man. After all, he is expecting his 10th child and, you know, this will be his second with his fiancée, Paige Butcher. Okay, that's interesting. We might just see a little romance or not. Well, anyways, let's talk about the troubled rap star Takashi69. He has appeared in court to make his plea in the Rico case that has been brought against him by the FBI. Takashi, whose real name is Daniel Hernandez, was arrested last week by federal agents on six counts of racketeering and firearms crimes. Yesterday, he appeared before a judge along with three other defendants. Takashi entered a formal plea of not guilty, and his trial date was set for September 4th next year. In the meantime, the judge denied his bail and house arrest requests because the court believes Takashi could commit another crime if he's released. According to the rapper's lawyer, Takashi has now also been moved to a new facility because he's receiving so many threats from other inmates. 
not good. Well, this is good news. Black Panther actress Inai Gurira has just been added to the star-studded host committee for this year's Global Citizens Festival in Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, the music festival will be celebrating the late Nelson Mandela centenary and will be hosted by a group of global stars to mark the milestone. Denai will be joining comedians Trevor Noah and Dave Chappelle. This will also be the first time Trevor will be hosting an event of this magnitude in his home country of South Africa. So, other hosts include supermodel Naomi Campbell and movie mogul Tyler Perry. The festival is due to take place this Sunday, the 2nd of December, and a whole host of music's biggest names will be on stage to perform. Now, it is going to be one amazing event. Well, that is all of today's music news, but don't you worry, we've still got so much more to come, even right now, as we turn to social media and get stuck into what's trending. <laughs> And here to help me out with social media and all of its madness, it's a Rise correspondent, Judita De Silva, who has all the scoop on what's been trending in showbiz. Now, Judita, I'm going to tell you a story, yeah? I've literally been choking on air, and now I know why. It's because you look smoking hot. You've been making me choke, literally, all the way from London. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I bet I'm so faking it. This is all CGI because I knew you were coming back and you always look so flawless. I had to represent. Oh my God, I'm t totally tape behind taking that dress. Tape. <laughs> anyway, it's great to have you on. So let's get the show started. We hear there are some, you know, whispers about a collaboration between music stars Rihanna and Donald Glover. So what is this romance about? Okay, so um, Donald Glover, we all know, like he took over this year with his album because he goes by the rap name Childish Gambino. So what happened is that he was um, performing at the Faros Festival in New Zealand, and he decided to treat his audience to a sneak preview of the beginning of his new collaboration with Rihanna, because Rihanna has been in love with him ever since he broke out, and has, she loves his music. Every year she hosts a charity Diamond Ball, and this year she chose him to perform, and people were commenting about she was in the front row singing along and dancing, and remember his seminal record, um, This Is America, that basically stopped traffic. So now, everyone, since then, everyone's saying, like, well, Rihanna's always saying she loves him. Rihanna's working on new music. Are they going to work together? Well, they have done. His new song is called Guava Island, and he showed the video at the festival. And um, he, Rihanna plays his love interest in the film, and it's set in this um, imaginary African island where he gets kidnapped. And it's basically been directed by Hiro Murai, who was the director behind This Is America. So it's really, like, an epic epic production that everyone's very excited to see. Absolutely. I know it's going to be fantastic. But, you know, we like to do our own snooping around, Judita. Now, we saw that romance happen with, you know, Fever on Tiwa and Whiskey. Now, we know this is an entirely new skill. And we also know that these are two people that are not in open relationships. So are we going to see some type of romance after this? Because this is Donald Glover and Rihanna. Great pair. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they were to get together, they couldn't have get together, together at a better time because they might do a Beyonce and Jay-Z where their network increases exponentially because they are so at the top of their game, respectively. Um, but what I think it is at the moment, they're saying it's a creative pairing made in heaven. But everyone's talking about they had such electric chemistry in this preview of the music video, so who knows? But everyone knows that... Rihanna kind of churns through men because she's such an alpha female. She's building her empire, so she doesn't have time to really manage any men's egos. So who knows? Who knows? But then this, this video looks like it's going to be great because it also stars Letitia Wright, the actress from Black Panther, and Nonso Anosia, the actor from Game of Thrones. So they've put money into this production. So let's just wait and see. It's, it's basically all about hashtag black excellence. Hashtag black excellence. I like that. Now let's talk about another lady that <laughs> is just, you know, a spitting depiction of Latin excellence, talking about Cardi B. Now, she knows exactly how to silence her critics, yeah. and we're hearing that she just did it all over again. So what went down this time? 
Okay, everyone's talking about this on social media. So there's a, t um, a British TV actress, sorry, TV actress and also a TV presenter. Her name is Jamila Jamil. And so she saw a post that Cardi B put on her Instagram, which was advertising this laxative tea that helps detox. And so Jamila took it personally and decided to lay into Cardi B and say that she hopes that every celebrity like Cardi B ends up pooping their pants, like those poor women who take their advice to drink this laxative tea. And she doesn't know why people are not told to naturally lose weight if they want to, as opposed to using things like laxatives. And then Cardi B saw the post, and rather than get her back up, she just replied that, no, I will never poop my pants. And they didn't use poop, they used a very rude word, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> says, no, I will never poop my pants because there are public toilets everywhere, and if necessary, there are bushes. <laughs> and everyone loved it. Oh my goodness, Cardi B just has to be Cardi B. Well, let's talk about this, because Jamila Jamil did make a very, very valid point. However, this laxatives and these teas and these herbs, they've become like a big deal lately. Everybody's doing it. So do you think there was anything wrong with what Cardi B did? Was there, was there anything wrong with advertising the fact that she's taking tea to lose all that baby weight? At the end of the day, it's like, it's personal choice. Everything you use, you use in moderation and you use with education. If you actually know exactly what you're putting into your body and you know it's not damaging it and you're not using it excessively to do the kind of damage that Jamila is warning against, then it's fine. Cardi B is an adult, she's a mother of one. She's not gonna do anything to put herself in danger. And if somebody is going to be inspired by what she's endorsing, I strongly doubt that with at this stage of her career, at the level she's gotten, gotten to, she's gonna risk it by endorsing something that's dangerous. So it's all seen as natural herbs that help cleanse you out and detox you. So it's, I, I don't see what the problem is. I think Jamila, her point is very valid, like you said, because she's warning against people who use it irresponsibly and use the wrong product. But if it's being endorsed by Cardi B, it's gonna have been vetted by her people. And it's gonna be probably one of the things that can be used in moderation in a healthy way. You know, now that you mentioned that, I really wanna ask a question. Do you think, because at the end of the day, like you said, she is coming, Jamila Jamil feels like, okay, this is being used irresponsibly. And if you noticed, what is this notion, what is this popular belief that rappers or people What's responsible that they just can't be doing something that is responsible? What is up with that notion? Because I think it's a law of averages. The majority, the nature of how social media has become what it is today is kind of gay abandon and recklessness. It's shock value. People act before they think. They speak before they really consider. And so when you're, th the guttural reaction of anybody who's conservative or rational or well thought out is to see something on social media and just ascribe it to the almost Kim Kardashian generation of people who are sensationalists. Because when you think of people like Kim Kardashian, she made a lot of money by just endorsing products. As long as she was getting the paycheck, she'd endorse it. So Jamila is probably thinking Cardi B is one of these people, but she doesn't realize that Cardi B is now in a situation where she can't do that because it could potentially destroy her career. And if it's something she's used herself post having a baby, it's something she's thought through because she has to think it through. So I think Jamila's apprehensions were well placed but wrongly directed she was going for the wrong person and I think that's probably why Cardi B didn't take it that seriously because she knows it's not founded exactly now you see Judita I've been so heartbroken all day because I've been checking a rise 360s mail and you know for both of us I haven't seen an invitation to Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas's wedding and I'm like what's going on like what have we done hashtag rude really really rude <laughs> <laughs> so, please, what's the update on that situation? Who do they think they are? I wonder. <laughs> Listen, I'm very upset. I've been checking the Arise 360 mailbox in the UK as well. It still hasn't come here. I think it's disrespectful. Oh my I mean, at the end of the day, we were actually invite, invited to the royal wedding, so I don't know who they think they are. I tell but you. still, let's talk about social media. <laughs> They've actually been... You know how like they're, they're the Jonas Brothers, because that's where um, Nick Jonas came from, his two brothers, um, Joe and Kevin, they were all in the band together. So everyone's kind of been waiting for the build up to this wedding because they're kind of thinking, will the Jonas Brothers get back together for a wedding performance? Priyanka Chopra's friend, Meghan Markle, is she gonna make an appearance? But they're really big on social media. So they're kind of tracking their, um, the, uh, the progress. We've seen Nick on the plane from New York. We saw his Thanksgiving meal in, in, in Delhi. And yesterday we saw 
saw Joe Jonas land in Mumbai with his fiance, the actress from Game of Thrones and X-Men, Sophie Turner. So they're officially in Mumbai. We're waiting for Kevin and Frankie Jonas to come in. But everybody's kind of posting, because this is really a great wedding, particularly for India, because it's putting them on the map. Because within Bollywood, India knows the Bollywood stars, but they're not that well known outside of India. But having a star on the level of Nick Jonas, he's bringing the spotlights to India. And the fact that they chose to have the wedding there, and they're tracking it on social media. Everyone's so excited. It's due to kick off on the 29th. It's going to be five days. It's like we said, it's going to be held at the Umaid Bhavan Palace, which is actually the residence of the Jodhpur royal family when they're there. So the residence they're actually using is $50,000 a night. So we know the level of opulence this wedding is going to have and everyone knows Indian weddings are lavish they're beautiful they're ornate they're gorgeous so when you kind of raise the bar that these are two wealthy celebrities you can just imagine how incredible this wedding is going to be see now you just made me feel worse but we still love you Judita we really really do and we yeah, gotta I'm let sorry, you go I, I heard it yeah sorry <laughs> we're gonna see you again during film and tv we're looking forward to that right all right, well, that's all from Judita De Silva in London, but there is even more to come from here later in the show when we talk about film and television. Now, trust me, you don't want to miss that. Well, let's head over to another quick break, but don't go anywhere, because when we return, I'll have the latest in art and culture, including everyone's favorite ballet, Swan Lake. Keep it here on Arise 360. We'll be right back. You're still watching Arise 360, and I'm your host, Kachi Ophia. Well, as promised before the break, it is now time for exhibitions, theatrical performances, and fashion shows as we step into our world of art and culture. Now, more than 20 years after its first premiere and UK tour, the multi-winning award modernization of Tchaikovsky's beloved fairy tale Swan Lake has returned to London, while Matthew Burns Productions returns with a fresh look for the 21st century. It is best known for replacing the female corps de ballet with a male ensemble shattering convention and taking the dance world by storm. Well, although Burns reimagining is a passionate and contemporary Swan Lake for our times, it also retains the iconic elements of the beloved original. And primary designer, the primary designer, however, for the fashion house Prada, will receive the Outstanding Achievement Award at the British Fashion Council's forthcoming awards ceremony. Now, since joining the family business in 1978, Miyuchi Prada has Spearhead of the evolution of the house from a family business to a global brand and tastemaker. Her ability to blend her multiple creative disciplines, including fashion design, art, and architecture, has made her a pioneering force in the industry. Mrs. Prada joins honorees Donatella Versace, Ralph Loring, and Carl Lagerfeld, who have previously been recognized for their contribution to fashion major, major contribution. Well, the truth is, there are several reasons why we love the opera Carmen, and it was created in the 19th century by Georges Bizet, and it remains popular till this very day. The Royal Opera House's production has everything fans have come to expect from the iconic opera high drama, passionate characters, and a love story. And what's more, it's absolutely packed with great melodies. The opera tells the story of the very seductive Carmen and the dangerous passion she arouses in a soldier. The titular character herself has become one of history's most iconic and beloved opera characters. A Nigerian-American artist, Njideka Akunyili Crosby, is set to display her work at London's National Portrait Gallery for the very first time. The display brings together new and existing works from her ongoing series, The Beautiful Ones, which is comprised of portraits of Nigerian youth, including some members of the artist's family. Akonyili Crosby was born in Nigeria and moved to the U.S. at the age of 16, where she has lived and worked ever since. This hybrid identity is reflected immensely in her work. 
The artist recently made history with a $3.4 million auction of one of her works. Art is really beautiful. While Victoria Beckham is taking her love for all things beauty to the next level, the fashion designer and style icon has officially announced that she's starting her very own beauty tutorial YouTube channel. Now, we've previously seen the former singer in a vlogging environment before as part of her Getting Ready series with Esther Luda. But we've got a feeling this latest beauty venture it's going to be a very big deal. And Broadway had its best Thanksgiving week in record history, grossing about $43 million as house records and several other markers were smashed. First of all, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child continues to cast a spell on Broadway a year after its opening and even set a new high for weekly ticket sales with a big $2.3 million gross. Other productions breaking house records were Frozen, which broke its two million house record after its opening last spring, and believe it or not, Mean Girls. It's vast improvement from last year's Thanksgiving gross, so it looks like Broadway has plenty of reason to be thankful this year. Well, it is time for another break right now, but do stay tuned to Arise 360 because coming up, I will be talking to Jadita De Silva once again, and we'll be getting into the grips with the latest in film and television. Don't go away. Welcome back to Arise 360. I am Kachi Ophia. So it is from the beautiful world of arts and culture into the even more beautiful world of film and television. Now, the truth is, how we manage to fit in so much showbiz into one hour is still beyond me. I guess that's exactly how we do on Arise 360. So let's get this party started with today's roundup of film and television. Now, to begin today's film and TV news is our very own black beauty, Viola Davis. Now, she is on top of the movie market, literally, as she just got a major deal with Amazon. Well, not just her, she and her husband. Juvie Productions is set to set in a big feature film with Amazon, and this deal has every single person talking. Let's remember that Viola Davis is an Oscar, Tony, and Emmy winner. So Amazon is trying to catch, cash in on every big actress. I mean, we've seen them get in with Blumhouse. We've seen them getting with Nicole Kidman. And their latest is with Viola Davis. So that is definitely a big, big win for Viola Davis and her husband. Well, away from our beautiful Viola Davis now to talk about what's going on with Avengers. Now, the truth is, I, I, keep, I keep getting sad because the release is all the way in May 2019. However, they have decided to give us a little joy and peace and happiness by releasing this eight box set comic book series, which is due for April. Now, while we expect this to come out in April, a lot of fans are beginning to wag as to what exactly this box set is going to be about. It's set to feature the major comics from the 55 year history of the entire Marvel series. So the question is, are we gonna get any teasers from this situation. Are we going to get any teasers from this comic book set? Is it going to tell us anything about what we can look forward to in Avengers? Well, I don't know, but I know that I will definitely be reading everything. I need to get my nitty gritty on. Well, away from that, the Me Too movement, as we spoke on a trip around the world with Rose McGowan, gets bigger day by day. And now Catherine Zeta Jones is waning on the situation. Now, we'll all remember the time Michael Douglas, her husband, <clears throat> excuse me, was called out by his staff who said he masturbated in front of her and literally destroyed her Hollywood carrier. Well, Catherine Zeta-Jones right now did an interview and she spoke about how that really, really hurt her family. Even worse, the very fact that she had to have this conversation about this situation with her children. 
I mean, it was hard because they were thinking, oh my goodness, is my father going to become a sexual predator? And she just talked about how, you know, the whole situation eventually just died down after a few years without any proof. Nothing happened. So she's now asking, where is the future of the Me Too movement? If somebody comes out to throw jabs at you, throw allegations at you, at the end of the day, when there's no evidence, it just takes the Me Too movement years behind. And that is what a lot of different celebrities today are talking about. The very fact that a lot of people are coming out with allegations against these celebrities, but till today, there is just no proof. Well, Catherine Zeta-Jones, we're more than happy that this is all over and in the past. Now, just before I let you go, we have kept you up to date about the Fox-Disney merger. We're really excited about this because this is literally going to put Disney on the map and would most likely make it literally the market to look forward to beating the likes of Netflix. However, they're about to hit a very big glitch as they might be facing a probable lawsuit. Now, the situation is, before the whole Fox Walt Disney deal started, Fox had gone into a partnership to develop a park. You know, something like you have with Disney's Disneyland. You know, it's amazing. And the truth is, Disney has managed to claim that market for themselves. But then, Fox decided to do something like this with a company in Kuala Lumpur, and it was a big deal. But with this Fox-Disney merger, they have decided to pull out of this deal, and they are not taking this funny. The company in question is not finding this funny, because where does that leave them? Seeing as they've invested so much. But not to worry, on Arise 360, hmm, we like to keep you up to date with all of the stories, so we will definitely let you know how that played out. Well, it is time for the final video of the day, and today it will be the amazing movie, Dirty John. How about you take a look? We'll be right back. <laughs> you were very sure from the start that he was the one. Cheers. She has a date with a guy. This one has potential. His name is John Meehan. I'd be scared to date people online. Like oh my God, look at you. It's inspiring. Oh my God, you're dating a doctor? What about you? You're an artist. You are so wonderful. <laughs> hey, look, open house. Want to take a look? Sure. Ronnie thinks that John is creepy. There's something wrong with him. What if she doesn't see him? You don't know him well enough yet. You don't know him at all. If you want to win over Ronnie, just don't leave. Either that or I could take her out with a Winchester 30 out 6 and a 1,000-yard headshot. What? in the safe, kiddo. That's my money, John. Everything that's yours is mine. I hired a private detective. <laughs> worry about your own sad little life and I'll worry about Debbie. He's lying to you. He's lying to you about everything. No more being nice, is that what you want? I know who I am. John? John. Dirty John. Why are you doing this? Dirty John, ladies and gentlemen. Now, quick question. Do you really know the person that you love? Well, that movie is due for November 25th, and it is just going to be absolutely fantastic. Remember, you can always check it out. And from us here at Arise 360, and of course, every single person in London, thank you so, so much for watching the show. Now, I'm about to tell you a secret. Like, you really cannot tell anybody, okay? For Arise 360, you can catch us every single weekday at 4 p.m. right here on the Arise News Channel. So, until next time, I am Kachi Ophia, and this has been Arise 360. Goodbye. <laughs>